Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome, folks. Day the Hungry Gamer is back with another episode of the Three Idiots Game of the Year. And I am joined by Michael Kelly of One Stop Co-op Shop and Mark Dainty of Not Board Gaming. And today we are going to do our tournament. Now, we didn't remember how this works, so I'm sure you don't remember how this works. What's going to happen is we each picked four games and we randomly put them into a bracket. And for each matchup, whoever picked the game is going to have to argue against the other person on why that game should win. And the third person will be the judge as to which game advances. Everything goes. If you're butt hurt in one round and you want to take it out on somebody later, if you can justify it in a way that doesn't make you look like a real idiot, go for it. If you're getting bored of somebody's argument about a game because they didn't save the good, the good juice for later on, it can be out however you want to do it. Are and we still we're taking gonna go. cash, Will? Uh, yes. For cash bribes, yeah? Okay. Yeah, but I, I don't know what that weird colored yeah. paper... <laughs> yeah, can you give us some you know, like, real money? <laughs> All right, so here we go. First, now, oh, and I will say, uh, each of us got one buy, which for myself was Familiar Tales, for Mike was Unsettled, and for Mark was Oathsworn. However... I will say that both Mark and I picked Oathsworn, and he won the roll off for that. So I had to go to my first, my first backup, which was Lunar Rush, which I will say had to be on my list because the nepotism lives up the road. <laughs> and my brother is the designer. Now, also, to be fair, it's a fun game, but my brother is the designer. It clearly had to be my other one. And Mike also had to go to one of his alternates because Mark got heat from him. Mark got heat? Mark got, got heat. heat. Man, I've so got heat. Yeah. And <laughs> I believe that that gave, I'm not sure which one of these was. Uh, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll just argue yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember what games I told you at this point. Yeah, well, so that's the thing, everybody. Like, we 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 picked these brackets back in um, got sometime in December, mid December. It is mid January, just about now. And oh, I think Title Age Two is what came in for you. Mike. Oh, that's a good game. All right, I'm cool with that. Yeah, I think that's what came. When, in. You, when you think about just how scientific this process is, as well, it really is the best way out of all of the best games of the year this is the best way to pick the winner you look at last year's winner the mighty exceed uh i mean you know it was <laughs> yeah it beat off stiff competition from loads of other big releases and this most scientific way of choosing a winner will it's only second behind beatrice the board game dog eating blueberries basically yep, yeah she picked a game that i haven't even opened yet <laughs> <laughs> what did she pick uh veil's fate okay wow. Yeah, yeah, but so they, they were nice enough for, um, from uh, uh, IB Games. They sent me, they were sending me a uh, Mythic Mischief, which I, I haven't mm -hmm. finished my video on just because I wound up being sick. But, and then they all said, oh, we included these others as well. And so I just haven't gotten around to it because that, that I, my understanding is you need, that's like a best at four players or so. So it still hadn't been open, but Beatrice is all about it. She, she must know something. Excellent. Um, but yes, that was, that was truly scientific. Because let me tell you, the reasoning that people were giving for why they picked what they picked was just crazy. People were like, well, you know, dogs see yellow better than other colors. So clearly, Mythic Mischief, <laughs> first round. What else said, uh, they happened to know that I had played Familiar Tales literally more than any of the others. And, well, that one probably smells the most like you. So she's probably going to go for that one. No. <laughs> I was yeah, like, forget it. Beatrice, Beatrice doesn't actually like you, so she will be away from that game. That's a yeah. you know, that's a good point. You know, this one thing. I was like, you know, um, she's got her own dog reasons, like <laughs> her dog reasons, and they start and end with blueberry. <laughs> All right, but enough, okay. enough. And so, oh, the last part is, uh, we have four games to get a buy in the first round, and we rolled off, and unfortunately, again, Michael Kelly got a second buy. <laughs> With Tainted Grail, Ruination of Kings Mike's of Ruin. Channel. Yeah, there you go. Ruination of my channel. Hey, hey, yeah. that, that video got some good views. They'll talk about that. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll hold back on Tainted Grail, your your thoughts on why this should be in here until it, the, 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 until the bracket comes up. I, I will say, there. you know, um, 
I don't I think your pedigree with James and Crail is, is, is totally, totally, um, let's say, uh, yeah. <laughs> legit, not legit, yeah, <laughs> faultless. Well, well, you know, I mean, to, to be fair, so for everyone you know, who hasn't already tuned out, uh, the rule was anything that we covered on our channel in the yeah. calendar year, old game, new game, prototype, whatever. So that 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 was that was the rule, and I just want to say, Mike, I really, I want to point out that uh, I watched Baron's video on Tainted Grail, not yours. That's so fine. I just want you to know that, and I'm let sure that, his was twice as long. Let that sink I in. talk fast. Let that sink in. <laughs> well, you know, uh, no, no, I, I was, uh, I actually sent him my prototype, he and Colin, so they could play it, and they both really enjoyed it. So I'm glad you got to watch that. Yeah, I always watch your five and five on 200 percent speed. You know, <laughs> that's that's the yeah. Yeah, that, that way I'm faster than uh, Jared at three minute board games, right? Yeah, and you know, and it's, it still feels like ten minutes. It's amazing. <laughs> it's great. It's a good start. All right. Uh, so, uh, Mark, all of, all of Will's games lose. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's yes, good. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna lose anyway. There's no chance. All right. So here we go. Oh boy, first one. Hey, Mike. Mike, I love your channel. Um, first matchup would be me with Monasterium versus. Oh wait, I have coffee coming in here. Oh, important stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, that'll give me time to look up what the heck Monasterium is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> you know nothing, Jon Snow. All right, so Monasterium versus Mark's Weather Machine. Ooh. Okay, uh, actually, this will be an interesting one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, not, great... I've not played either of these. I have heard things about Weather Machine, and most of them have been mediocre. So, <laughs> well, yeah. well, you know, we'll this see. is a this is a very good matchup for for Mike, hater of Euros. Um, I don't hate <laughs> Euros. I just don't like them for solo. Usually, I, I we just had a great game of uh, Arnak uh, last weekend, competitive, had blast. The only Euro he truly hates is Mark. I'm just. <laughs> I'm not a Euro anymore. Yeah, I was going to say they're not part of the Euro. They're they're their own uh, thing. Oh, you know, I didn't know if that was too soon to bring that up. For... Way too soon. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. So, uh, first of all, I apologize, Bambi. That small dog has lost a mind at something downstairs, so you hear lots of barking. Just yeah, I apologize. And it's it's also possible you'll hear you'll hear Beatrice because there she only barks when the cat's in the backyard. That is her domain. <laughs> Front yard, she doesn't care. But she always, we have a, a couch back there that's, that's covered over, and she always runs up to that couch and is like checking it. We're like, it's a couch. Yeah. This morning, I was out there tying things down because we have, we have a storm coming through. And um, I heard something on the couch. So I tapped the couch, and I'll be damned if a cat didn't run out of that couch and go <laughs> take off across the yard. Um, oh, we're talking about the storms we have here in California. I just got the stat that the amount of, they call it like the atmospheric river or whatever, the amount of moisture that's traveled through in that is more than the Amazon River. Oh my gosh. Wow. Like that that's wow. how much water like, like we've been having. Like, <laughs> it's good. All right. Anyhow, okay. in honor of that, I'm going to turn it over to Mark to take, to go first with Weather Machine and that very yeah. sensitive game that he's throwing out there, considering our troubles. Well, you say that, you know, you're having a storm, so we're all kind of familiar with weather. I think one thing that board games are missing is more weather implementation. Now, Mike, in one of your games of the year, heat, uh, obviously weather is a mechanic that is used to great effect in that as well, yeah? Many people's favorite game is Robinson Crusoe, where weather plays a crucial part. Frostpunk has just come out, which is all about the bloody cold weather. So weather is very much front and foremost. And in this age of environmental uh, kind of matters and making sure that we have a planet to save for the future, should we not more should we not be more cognizant of the weather? And that's exactly what Weather Machine allows you to do in this beautifully designed game with some of the best artwork I've seen from any people who said the game, Peter O'Toole. Um, uh, it is Peter Ian yeah. O'Toole, not Peter O'Toole. Yeah, Ian, Ian, Ian O'Toole. Ian O'Toole. Yeah. Yeah. I always say that. Is this yeah. dead from the grave? Yeah, Peter O'Toole yeah. is, has passed away. So, Lawrence of Arabia did some fantastic <laughs> artwork on this, basically. It's, it, it, I would literally have the board on my wall as a picture. I think it is that gorgeous. Not only that, what you've got is a game which is feels abstract at first when you first start playing it, but the way that the mechanisms weave together 
uh, absolutely first rate. I think it's right up there with one of my favourite Lacerdas, which is Kanban EV, in terms of once you get through those first couple of difficult plays, what you can do and the paths you can see to victory uh, or to potential victory are huge and varied, basically. It throws lots at you in terms of uh, variability, replayability, and it's backed up by a solo mode by David Turksey, which absolutely suits the game itself. Now, I, I, I have a thing about solo modes. I don't think they should be simple. I don't think they should be complex. I think they should be right for the game that they're representing. So you will have more complex ones and more simple ones. And this solo hits it bang on the head. Lots of beautiful artwork, really, really kind of bringing this almost, say, first it feels abstract, but it brings it all together into this wonderful game which takes about two hours to play. It's a pure, pure joy to play. Looks fantastic. It is one of my favourite releases of last year. I mean, you know, you put that up against something called Monster Starers or whatever it is, I'm, a game both Mike and I have never heard of. How are we going to choose a game like something about monks, I take it, is Monastery and War? You're done. No, well, not quite. I'll come back. Okay, okay. Well, for, first, <laughs> let me just say. Board games don't need weather. Board, <laughs> weather is bad for cardboard. First off, that's number one. No. My, my, the, wrong, hey, the, wrong, the wrong weather is hey. bad. <laughs> Simmer down, Peter O'Toole. Okay. <laughs> Second, it's horrible that they pulled a dead man out of the grave and made him do art. <laughs> Okay, that's two. Better, better than AI art. And yeah. the uh, 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 okay, yeah, I will give you that. That's fair. That's fair. And then, but the third thing that, that I'll just say about Weather Machine before I go on to the real winner here is there are a lot of people out there that like a game that has systems within systems within systems within systems within systems all encased in another system that don't necessarily need to be there, and. I'm assuming there is a flowchart of some length for that solo mode. Probably great length, maybe two pages. And a two-hour solo Euro, that is long. Like, long. So, that's all I'm going to say about Weather Machine. Now, the real winner here, Monasterium. It's a game nobody's heard of. Monasterium, okay. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The reason you haven't heard of it is... Because they, they haven't done their uh, uh, American Kickstarter yet. You know, that hasn't happened. That's why. That's why you haven't heard of it yet. And so they, they sent it to me early. I don't know why they delayed the Kickstarter, but it's coming. Now, here's the thing. Now, we all know religions like, oh, right? There's a lot of not great stuff happening in religion, but not with monks, right? Monks are the best part. <laughs> like, think Friar Tuck, Right. Friar Tuck, and you got that monastery where you have the dog, like the dog monk that runs around that you can give him a little robe. Like everybody likes monks and they make lovely liquors and stuff. And in this game, you have a donkey cart. And what's happening is you're on your donkey cart riding around from monastery to monastery. And as you get to each monastery, you're using dice that you've rolled. And maybe you're building a stained glass window. And if you get there first, your stained glass window is going to be better than Mark's stained glass window. And what's that going to get you? That's going to get you points. And it's going to get you rosary beads. And if you're hungry, it's going to get you soup, right? Soup. And Mike, I know that you are a literature teacher and you can also get books. That's right. You can make books also. Now, there's a lot more in this game about this dice placement, dice drafting, because you know what? You can take the other people's dice from them. You can take their dice. So you even got a little interaction in this game, this Euro game about monks and little tiny like little tiny puppies and little robes running around the monastery as they get books for Mike and soup for Mark, who's a poor homeless guy outside who needs some soup and you can give him soup as well. And you're building your actions as you go. They get stronger and stronger as you spend your soup and your, ro you gotta have rosary beads, right? You spend your rosary beads and you're making your actions better. And then each time you take a die, the sky is the limit, which was a callback to your weather machine, right? The sky. So all that's in there. You're building this tableau of actions. You're drafting dice. You're taking their dice. You got a donkey cart. And there's no Pope. But, you know, I think that, that all sounds well and good because don't get me wrong. I, I think the thought of soup 
books and windows. It just sounds so exciting, Will. I, you know, I'm literally grasping the edge of my seat, rushing out to play this game. And as for a game that forces a religious theme on people, you know, I'm all for that as well. I mean, this sounds like really so far up my alley. Uh, and you said that, you know, it's got dice in there. I mean, what a unique mechanism. Imagine that, a board game with dice. That's, that's it, 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 like, I'm, I'm throwing the towel. He's obviously do, won already. Does does Weather Machine have dice? No. Wow. A board game with no <laughs> dice. All right, all right. We, we, we but can't it does take... have books. All right, no, we, we got to turn it over to the judge. No, no we more. Can't, we, we can't take this long for each round or we're never going to finish the video. Um, yeah, I'm a little torn. I was looking at both that the BGG pages for both games since I haven't played either of them. Uh, he wasn't listening to either of us. He was just no, I, just, <laughs> uh, I do think Weather Machine is more attractive. I tend to love Vino Tool's work and it looks great here. Yeah, but this was um, Pedro Tool. Okay. Um, <laughs> Weather Machine has a solo mode, um, but it's also a Turksy solo mode. His team, I'm kind of hit or miss with their solos. Like sometimes I love them, sometimes I don't. Also, it looks like you only get it with the upgrade pack, Mark. That's what it says on BGG. Like, the solo does not come in the, like, main game. Have to pay uh, extra. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I got it with all sent by. I want yeah, you to know. That, that's what it's I'm saying working, online. Um, I'm working on a solo mode for Monasterium. I want you to know that. Well, that was the thing I was going to say. There is no solo mode for Monasterium It's right going to be I mean, free for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, honestly, I think both of these games are dead in the water the second they go up against anything else. So none of this really matters. <laughs> But uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for Monasterium just because I. If I'm gonna play, if I'm gonna play a Euro, I'd much rather have dice drafting and something a little bit more going on than the standard like you know. And Lacerda is very hit or miss and more miss for me. Like I don't tend to like, uh, especially for solo, his games very much. So uh, there we go. Woo. Fix, fix, stop the steal. Stop well, I just want you to remember, steal. Mark, who 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 threw your weather machine out when next round. All right. <laughs> Now, the next one. Now, uh, uh, Mikey, you have Hoplomachus, right? I don't know. Uh, let's see. I, I, it's definitely a game I liked. I, I think Mark liked it too, though, so I don't know. Let's see. Because uh, you have, oh, you have two, ga two games up against each other, Mike? That'll be interesting. That sounds like <laughs> bad bracket making, Will, but anything's possible. Oh, well, you know what? I, I, hold on. I, I'll fix this. No, no. Mar Mark has Hoplomachus. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. But, but still, we, that means we have a problem elsewhere. So I'm going to move Tidal Blades two and i'm gonna trade that with hoplomachus yes i'm looking hoplomachus was not on my list that i sent you yeah but you did have iss vanguard yes all right okay there bracket fixed this is gonna go poorly for me all right so now we have the battle for grayport expansion chaos in copper forge versus Tidal blades two mm -hmm. that is myself versus mike with our glorious barrister, Lord High Judge, Dainty. Kyle and, uh, well, I went second last time, so I guess I'll start out. So, so you know, we, we all know that sometimes there's a, there's a game that just doesn't get the love that it should. And we all love an underdog game. We all love being like, oh, this is a game that you should play. And then everyone plays, oh my gosh, you're right. And so Battle for Greyport was one of those games. Like, they... I'm not going to lie, they screwed the pooch when it came out. All right, it was really hard. It was unbeatably hard. I've literally never beaten the tutorial as written. Impossible. But they fixed it. They, re they realized they messed up. They came out with an expansion and a free rules upgrade. They fixed all of that, and it became winnable. And you know, once that game became winnable, it became great. Because here's the thing. One... It's based in the Red Dragon Inn universe, which, you know, you may or may not like the take that card game Red Dragon Inn either way. But what it does have is amazing characters. All the characters are great fun. They have unique personality. And so now instead of just drinking and gambling, you're going out and adventuring and you're saving the town in this deck building game. What this deck building game does that's really cool is you don't have any of those cards that you use just to buy more cards. I hate that. All your cards, their action or their items of some sort that you're going to use. And every round, you're going to get to buy one thing. You know what kind of money you got. You know what's out there. 
that part of the game's gone. And it's just pure adventure where every turn, everybody gets to play. Mark, it's your turn. You do your thing. Well, I can send some of my cards to help you out. But I got to be careful because I don't get to draw new cards until my turn. So as you're playing through, you're managing a little bit Euro style, your resources of the cards in your hand, not to use them all because then it comes to your turn, you might have blown all your stuff and you have nothing left. So it's all very fun, all very clever. Now, here's the point, Chaos and Copper Forge. One, it introduces like steam robot things, which is always great. And it just adds in some more bad guys, these really fun mechanic where every time you beat one of these steam robot guys, you get to take a piece of them and you could add it into your deck. Oh, I just beat the little robot gnome with the buzzsaw arm. Well, now I'm taking that buzzsaw arm, and now I'm going to use it against him. Can't beat that. That's amazing. Best deck builder out there for my, cooperative deck builder at least, out there for my money is Battle for Greyport, Chaos and Copper Forge. One, fun to say. Two, makes it even better. It is a weird one because uh, Battle for Greyport is one of my top 10 uh, cooperative deck builders as well. And I thought I did, I previewed Copper Forge as well. I, I think it's not a perfect expansion, but the big thing kind of like you will is I'm just happy that it's getting more life and more attention and will be out there more. Um, so yeah, if it, was, if it was straight up a battle of Battle for Greyport versus Tidal Blades 2, I think it'd be tough. I would say if you're just talking about Chaos and Copper Forge, it's a pretty good expansion and it's great that the game's going to be out there more. I don't think it's that impressive. Tidal Blades 2 was a revelation to me when I played it at PAX. 2? Um, Sounds like an expansion. No, it's a, it's a totally different game. It's a Tidal Blades 1 under a play, but I think it's like sort of, work, maybe not worker placement, but it's like a Euro in a way. This is a campaign-based dungeon crawler. Uh, Mark, I know you enjoyed Oathsworn, and I would compare this very favorably to this. Uh, Tidal Blades 2 was probably my favorite pure dungeon crawler experience this year. Uh, just playing the prototype and playing on tabletop simulator. It's like Oathsworn. This is the one aspect I'll talk about this round, assuming I go on to another round. Maybe I won't. Um, <laughs> um, like Oathsworn, it's it's a dungeon crawler. Well, not that Oathsworn is a dungeon crawler, but it's, it's a like tactical combat game where you have a little bit more to think about than something like Descent, you know, where like you just move and hit, move and hit. Um, in this one, how they do it is you have a deck of cards and you've got a three by three grid and you're playing cards of the grid but then you get the bonus, you pick a row or a column of the card you played, you get a bonus of every other card in that column. So you're kind of like slowly building out combos and you can use a card both vertically and horizontally, which that was the opposite of the hand thing I just did. Um, so it's like it, they, they it's, do the metric system in the UK. So that's actually how they do it. Fair. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a... Uh, <laughs> It reminds, it, it's sort of, again, it reminds me of like Oathsworn. It reminds me of Gloomhaven, but simpler. It's one of those like dungeon crawlers where you have interesting choices every turn and like hand management every turn, but it's still very streamlined. It's still very fast to play. The AI is like the smoothest and simplest AI I've seen for a dungeon crawler in a while. And well, sorry, I shouldn't say simplest. They still do interesting things, but it plays so smoothly. It's so quick to resolve. It's so straightforward. And you have some predictability in what they're going to do. So so yeah, I, I just love it. I think it's a great dungeon crawler. I, I'm not, y'all you, you know from last year, if you watch this, I'm not as good at making like the goofy arguments as Will and Mark are. <laughs> but like in an actual way, I think it is fabulous. It's one of my most anticipated games when it delivers next year. Well, hopefully next year. Uh, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, but I love <laughs> Greyport too. So Mark, you know, go, go whichever way you want. I got no problem. Uh, but uh, Greyport's a fab fabulous game. Title Blades okay. 2 is ridiculously good. So I think where I'm coming from is I've never played either of these games at all. Uh, Mike, you kicked me out last uh, last term, but Will, you beat me last term. So, uh, you know, you're both in a really disposition, uh, kind of not in a great position right now, I'll tell you the truth. However, let's think about this. So uh, Battle for Greyport, whatever it's called. I can't remember the, all the, the other stuff that comes after the colon, basically. Um, they had to bring out... You should see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> they had to bring out an expansion to fix the game is that right no, no, no it was, they had to do a rules a rules yeah. errata oh right okay so they screwed up on the original and then did a rules yeah errata. And, so and, they did and, an and expansion the, sense and so a, a bit more than a rules errata they also needed like you needed to print and play a oh yeah there, there was a few new cards that's right but in the newest edition they they have that in the game it's, so. it's, and, it's and, all and that. if you got the uh, first expansion they did they sent yeah so it. at this point anybody buying the game and playing it would get the good well, experience the the okay, bad experience cool. is is consigned to the bin yeah yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to, to put out there that you know this is a company that was like oops Let's fix our problem. 
<laughs> right, okay, fine. And and then for Tidal Blades, I've never played Tidal Blades uh, I or Banner, Banner Festival, so I have no idea about this IP. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of its existence. Uh, and it's a dungeon crawler. Yay, another dungeon crawler. So, you know, do we, does the world need another dungeon crawler? As you say, we've got Oathsworn. We have Frosthaven being delivered to people uh, at the moment as well. Do we need another dungeon crawler? Quite possibly. We all like dungeon crawlers. This is things. So I'm to torn between two games I've neither played nor know anything about whatsoever, <laughs> <laughs> which is always a really good position to be in. Uh, however, I have played Red Dragon in it at Will's house. So uh, the original Red Dragon, in, that's, that was, that's what we played, wasn't it, Will? Yeah. Yep. So purely for the fact that I played something related to one of those games, I'm going to go with Red Dragon in Battle for Greyport. And that's it. Yes. <laughs> well, you good know, choice. Good choice. And, and the good thing is that 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 avoided a Mike versus Mike matchup in round two. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's really what the world needs to avoid. So I'm, yeah. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Okay. Highly scientific. This this is good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now we have the first Mike Mark matchup: ISS Vanguard versus Hoplomachus. Mm. And I, be, I I I believe Mark just picked all Hoplomachus. We'll go with Victorum. Yeah. Let's we'll go, go with, with Victorum because when yeah, I, I, I haven't like, played well, remastered keep in yet. one box. You said yeah. it came in one delivery, so it all counted. But so Victorum, and uh, uh, well, whoever wants to go first, go for it. Um, on you go first, Mark. You haven't talked about. Oh, all. okay, 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 fine. So, uh, where did uh, just before I start talking about Hoblomachus Victorum and and how great it is, where was it on your top ten list, Mike, for twenty twenty two? It, it was not as high as ISS Vanguard, but it was right up there. I love that game. Uh, let me look. Right, okay. It was, uh, oh, wow. I, I yeah. like that. Oh, it, it, it was, <laughs> Mark, literally, uh, Hoplo was five and ISS Vanguard was four. So Okay, not, fine. Not, <laughs> really, it's interchangeable. I, I like them about the same. <laughs> so Hoplo Mac is Victorum, as we know, is the solo-only version and implementation or re-implementation, if you like, of the Hoplo Macus series, uh, which was Chip Theory Games' first game. This beautifully designed, wonderfully produced adventure game takes you on a true campaign as you go through numerous battles to fight against the ultimately kind of strengthen up and battle the scion at the end. It's got all of the patented chip theory kind of production values in there, the intricacy of the rules, but it's more streamlined than the original Hoplomachus as well. Every battle can feel slightly different as you fight different maps. It's just got loads and loads of playability and you know, replayability, which is not really the word, but you know what I mean there. Uh, the fact you can keep going back to this and going back over and over again and fight very, very different battles. From the heroes that you choose to the bosses that you battle to the uh, the scions, etc., you can choose different every time. And they're bringing in the ability to kind of swap and change, bringing mm -hmm. your factions from remastered into, uh, into Victorum and vice versa. There's a reason. And I would say this is possibly the best solo-only release of 2022 the best pure solo release of 2022, and deservedly so. It's been a long time coming. The production quality is fantastic. It's obviously very high up on Mike's, uh, on Mike's list. And let's face it, the, the game I'm up against is an Awakened Realms game, and Michael sometimes puts them at the top of his list, and then they kind of, you know, he sells them two weeks later. So I wouldn't put much stock in his choice right now, yes? So Hoblomachus Victorum, obviously the clear winner here for a solo perspective. Yeah, I mean, I love Hoplomachus. Uh, I'll just say ISS, I mean, it really will. It's, it's a choice between um, Hoplomachus has amazing tactical combat, great variety, this really fun, like, kind of building of your team. Uh, ISS Vanguard is uh, probably the best narrative experience I've played this year. Amazing kind of, like, mystery and sense of exploration. Not much combat, like, and it, it's very focused on, like, planetary exploration, and the combat is kind of secondary and almost never happens. Um, so yeah, if you if you like that narrative side and like kind of discovering things, I think uh, ISS is better. ISS, of course, you can play solo. It's great for solo or cooperative. I have like two different campaigns going for it. Um, the one knock I have against Hoplo, and I do have a knock against it, is that I'm not sure how much I personally will play Victorum once Remastered gets here, because I only have Victorum right now. Because um, Victorum is such a bear to get through. It is a very long campaign. It's fun. Like, I, I love the campaign. I played through it twice. Um, but it's a very long campaign. And I feel like I, I'm, I mean, I, not having played it yet, Mark, you have. I feel like once I get remastered, I'm going to get a similar, like, fun, varied tactical experience. 
and not have to like kind of commit to like 30 to 60 hours of like playing through a campaign. That's the only knock I have against it. Isis Vanguard only has a giant campaign, but I think the narrative kind of like thrust pulls me forward on that one. But yeah, once again, like y'all are picking games that I love, so I don't care. Pick whatever you want, Mark. <laughs> I mean, not Mark Will. Wow. Oh. Doesn't even know who the judge is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. so knock against me right there. It really is. <laughs> Um, so here's, I have not played, that's not true. I played Hoplomox Victorum at Gen Con in their super secret room, which was a blast. And I got to play it with, uh, buddy Don and, uh, we, we actually, it was a solo game, but we, we just, we did it together and shared that we had a blast. I've not played ISS Vanguard because my buddy backed it and, um, he picked one way of shipping. So it'll be that oh, six, no. six years before he <laughs> Yeah. Had me too and uh, i mistakenly picked single wave shipping so i'll get it sometime in 2030 oh, i'm sorry guys like there's already yeah, so yeah. much in the base game you don't need anything else for a long time <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, so well. there, there's that now i do have and at some point i have a the both the hop lows coming it's at some point so you know, that, that, that's coming up now what did catch me a little bit because i do love the chip theory titles you know i don't I can't keep them all, right? That's that's the hard thing with chip theory ties. You can't keep them all just because of space. You don't have enough space. So I always got to pick, you know, which one. And what I will say is I, I let my burn cycle go. Mm. And I like burn cycle because I knew I had Hoplomachus Victorum coming. I, and I really like burn cycle, but I loved Victorum. I don't know anything about ISS Vanguard. I do love me a narrative dungeon crawl. It's not a dungeon crawl, an adventure game. Nah, so I really, yeah, yeah, really adventure. like I really like a narrative game. And how you almost had me with it until you said you almost never do combat. Yep. It's a very peaceful game, actually, for the most part. And I don't, I don't, I already have Lands of Galzir. So I get all my not combat, peaceful, fun loving story right there. So I, I think you talked yourself out of it, Mike. I mean, like I said, I don't mind. That's fine. <laughs> I, I, I think I was there. Um, and, and Mark, I will say, you. Um, I want you to remember that knock about him getting rid of Awakened Realms games a little bit later. You just remember yeah. how important that was to you as we <laughs> put Hoplomachus on to round two. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. All right. And now we have the one that Mark stole from Mike, Heat. Mm versus my first runner-up, which I pulled in, and that is Lunar Rush. And Mark, mm. I'm going to give you the option. Do you want to go first or second? Hey, I've played both second. of these a lot there. This is the first time <laughs> this is the first time one of the judges has actually played both games, I think. Uh, I'll go second, Will. You go first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just, all right. Just remember, Will's brother designed this. Uh, that's all I'm saying. Yep. So. Just remember... Well, don't forget, Mark, I've played it, and Steve's my friend, so yeah. <laughs> there's way oh, more going on here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, Mark, Mark, and I will say that Mark originally, before he remembered, I think it was uh, uh, Hoplomachus, he originally was thinking about having Lunar Rush in his list also. I just want yeah, to put that yeah. out there. So first I'll say, remember how important family is, Mike. Family is important. You remember that. And personal relationships are important. Now... <laughs> Just play that clip of Mike shouting his kids early, uh, that he did earlier. Then. That's fine. Yeah. So. He didn't shout. He just forcefully informed that <laughs> someone needed to go upstairs. <clears throat> As you do. Okay. I forcefully informed the designer of Lunar Rush of many a time about many a thing. <laughs> no. So I know you know how to play Lunar Rush. So I'm not going to dig into that. What I am going to dig into is the thing that. Gets overlooked, I think. And that is the satirical nature of Lunar Rush. I want you to think about this. All right. In the future, you, whoever, you know, you're running your corporation, have gone on what I can only assume is future space Shark Tank. And future space Mark Cuban's like, you know what? Here's 20 gig credits, 20 space bucks, we're going to call them. And you start your your company and of course the first thing you gotta do is you gotta spend your space bucks but so you gotta spend money to make money mike 
You got to spend money to make money. That's how this thing works. And you can get up there. You're going to start building your stuff out. You're building out this beautiful thing. And what do you have to do at the end of each round? You got to feed those workers. Because you know what? The future space unions, not only do you have to pay them and give them a place to sleep, you got to feed them. And if you don't feed them, you know what happens? Mark, what happens if you don't feed a future space worker? I'm going to ask him, bring you in on this. You know what happens? Well, we, we, we kind of go through it at the moment. They strike. Basically. No, they die. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> in lunar eventually. rush, they die. They don't have the chance. Yeah, they die. And do you know what happens? Do you know what happens, Mike, if one of your future space workers dies in, in space? Lawsuit. Yeah. It's a lawsuit. You have to pay out 25 space bucks to the family so they don't sue. Okay? Now, if that is not a wonderful – and also, let's just also point out, we find these beautiful resources on the moon. And what is the first thing we do? We rip them out of the moon and we bring them to Earth to sell it to rich people who don't need it. This now, is the selling point for the game? That is a beautiful <laughs> satire ah. of capitalism. Capitalism. Yeah, okay. Right there. And you know the mechanics are good and fun. I'm just going to leave it there and just let that beautiful satire waft over you. Okay. Like uh, okay. a rose-smelling fart. <laughs> so I think uh, Will's just <laughs> compared Lunarish to a fart, which should set but a rose-smelling really nicely. There. <laughs> you're, you're welcome, Steve. And I, and I have to be really careful here because when I go to Gen Con later this year, I'm staying with the guys from Dead Alive Games, so I can't really upset them about <laughs> Lunarish too much, or I'm sleeping on the streets of Indianapolis. Um, <laughs> however, <laughs> yeah, there, there are there are worse streets to be stuck on. Like that's yeah. a pretty that's a pretty gentle street. <laughs> however. However, let's talk about heat. Mike, how many times have you played Lunar Rush with your kids? Uh, zero times. How many times have you played heat with your kids? Four or five times. And have they had a great time every time? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but you heat. have that copy in your house. You had to send Lunar Rush on. on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if heat. Lunar Rush was in my house, I still would be playing with my kids specifically. <laughs> That's heat. just a question of weight. <laughs> heat came out of nowhere last year, really. Nobody was really, beginning of last year, nobody was excited about Heat. For Essen onwards, everybody was talking about Heat. It's a game that's so simple to play. It does hand management so, so very well. It has so many modules in there that you can throw in to make the game as slightly more complex or easier as you want, depending on the audience that you're playing it with. It's a game that you will play and then set up and play again straight away uh, because it just has that real kind of feel to it. You play solo against really good AI, you know, numerous cars in the AI, or you can play up to six players competitive as well, which is so much fun. I mean, he is the true superstar of last year. Came out of nowhere from Days of Wonder. You know, I know it featured very highly in, in Mike's list of kind of top 10 games, and had he had more chance to play, it may well have risen up to his, his number one game of the year. I think it goes without saying that as good as Lunar Rush is, and it is a good game, I'm not mocking that whatsoever, um, I think Heat is just a standout game from last year that deserves a place on everybody's kind of top five, top 10 list of the year. I'm just going to say, Cult of the New, okay, Cult of the New, and Mark has voted against you every time so far. <laughs> that that is true. heat from you. I mean, <laughs> I'm really torn on this one. Like, yes, clearly, <laughs> Heat was my number three game of last year, and as Mark said, it's probably already up to number two or number one. I don't know. I, I love that game. Um, I just did a ranking list of uh, my favorite racing games for our Patreon. Like, I'm editing it, and he featured very prominently there. Um, I love racing games. Lunar Rush is awesome, but it's an economic Euro. So for my taste, it's never going to compete. Be like Vin but, Diesel from Fast well, hold and on. Family. So a few things. I did like uh, Will's satire argument, but I think uh, Vlada Chamadol's Galaxy Trucker was doing a better job with, uh, he, he was doing the, the lawsuit for people being lost in space on your ship a little bit earlier before Space Rush, or Lunar Rush, I mean. Um, <laughs> on the other hand, I feel like if I pass heat forward, like what am I gonna when am I gonna vote against it? Like it's literally my maybe number one game of last year. I, I it was one of the number one games I sent to Will in my bracket. So and then Mark has voted against me twice in a row. I feel like that does you know what? Uh, Lunar Rush is passing forward. Oh, Take that oh, heat. Well, I tell you what, I'm now gonna open my game as Rally Man Dirt, which arrived before Christmas. That I'm not no, you I'm have never, 
I'm, I, I'm never going to play Heat again. Now that's it. Yeah. You know, that, that, that makes me extra sad because the U.S. Rallyman Dirt Cup, you still haven't shipped, and I went all in on that thing, man. Oh, it still hasn't? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I, just, I think the, the latest update, I think I said it might start. It's in the U.S., and they're shipping other games, like their distributor that is totally – yes, I see it. It's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Unopened. So uh, just out of curiosity, for, for, since both of you have played both. Um, yeah. Heat or Rallyman? This for what just just in general if, if i'm gonna say okay no, 60, like as um, a overall thing i'm still not sure um I, I need to play dirt um i imagine it'll end up being i think heat will pass rally man as the number one racer at, as time goes on i think it probably will it, it's easier to play multiplayer my kids like it better and my game group will actually play heat whereas they really don't like rally man so rally man's pretty much only a solo or like with will and mark uh game for me um yeah. But I love Rally Man. I think that's the same thing. I think, you know, rules wise, there's obviously a lot more rules minutiae in Rally Man. So it can make for a more uh, strategic game than Heat, yes. but Heat yes. just has that real arcade feel about it. That kind of, you know, set it up in two minutes, play a game within 45 minutes. Whereas with Rally Man, you're putting out all the various ra- uh, tracks, yeah, yeah. et cetera. So it can be a long time set up and, and, and tear down. Yeah. I don't think I'll get rid of Rally Man, Will. But I think Heat is probably going to be my number one racer at the moment. Interesting. I guess I'll have to play Heat sometime. All right. But it's so, still not good enough, even though it's even though it could be. No, it's, it's great. I, again, I think if, if yeah, I had no, it forward, no. it would have beat every game. Like, you know, I, I think Mar- it, Mar- it'll be a know, more interesting bracket with it out. You know, the, 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 the butt hurt is strong in this competition. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost twice in a row. I didn't hear me complaining. Or, you know, yeah. All right. Uh, so, uh, uh, Mark, do me a favor. Pick a number one through four. We're going to randomize which three. one we do. Three. Are we in round two already? Oh, yeah. We're in round two. Ah. All right. Now we're into the the, the games that got buys. We have Familiar Tales versus Hoplomachus. And, well, I'll go first this time since you were just having to talk, Mark. Let you take a breath. There All you. right. So. Deck building. I like deck building. <laughs> wonderful story. You like wonderful story. For the first time, a system of rules that you can easily find an answer to. From Jerry Hawthorne, who I love his designs, but yeah, he doesn't usually do that. <laughs> yep, but so easy to find stuff. So easy. Family friendly. You can play with it, play with the kids if you want. If you're the type who likes painting, I know you're not, but if you're the type who likes painting, great minis. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Small box, easy to store, big adventure. That is what you get with Familiar Tales. And let's not forget, we have that lovely shared memory of demoing it with Jerry. Oh, Me, yeah. you, Peter, and Jeremy Howard, who was the sexy voiced frog. That's right. And let's not forget the sexy voiced frog. <laughs> Yeah, the frog, it's a... It's no business having a voice that sexy. That's what you get for, for, with Familiar Tales. I'm not going to dig into the mechanics of it, because you know the mechanics. I do. And there is pure joy. Then I will say, it is one. It is the first time I have ever, in a calendar year, received and finished a campaign game. I did the whole thing all the way through, and that says something. Mm. That's all you need for Familiar Tales. For round one. When we get into round, you know, the next round, we'll, we'll dig in a little deeper. But you think of all that. Let all that percolate. Like like some old coffee, one of those huge percolators. Just let it percolate. So are you playing animals in Familiar Tales? Familiars. You well, you're familiar. So it's like a fairy, yeah, a golem, uh, and a, uh, a fox animal. and a sexy voice frog. Okay, right. So pretty unimaginative kind of standard tropes, basically. So all it's done is taken existing mechanisms and existing okay, hold on, characters wait, wait, wait. and rehashed them, in basically. Yeah. With, with gladiators? And say unimaginative. Well, and hold on. He literally just said rehashed, where this is just a redesign and a re-implementation of the exact same game they already released in the past. <laughs> exactly. So what they've done is they've polished the diamond here. Yeah, <laughs> they've polished the diamond with Hoplomachus. What they haven't done with Familiar Tales is obviously uh, decided to explore anything in any way kind of original whatsoever. Uh, I've never played Familiar Tales. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I've got to say that... The <laughs> so I do apologise to Plaid Hat. Um, <laughs> ish, 
But it's true because I'm coming after Will here, not your game. And quite frankly, his arguments were, well, disappointing to say the least. Say he's only finished one campaign game. Just goes to show the depth, the kind of depth and breadth of Will's gaming experience here. And therefore, <laughs> you're not American. You can't go American politics on this. <laughs> they so, stick yeah. with your, I mean, with you your cabbage PM. But I think that, you know, Mike, you know, as you say, you played through the whole campaign of Hoplomachus maybe three times now, yeah? You know, that's that's in, in four or five months. That's not in an entire year. So, you know, we're talking about two campaigns here. One game, you've got to devote an entire year to finishing it with pretty unoriginal characters and, and what have you. The other one, there aren't that many gladiator games out there, and you can play a campaign in about 12 hours. Now, I don't know about which one I choose. When you've got Aeon's Trespass on the table, which is going to demand a year of your time or two years of your time, you know, and you want to break from it, but you also want a campaign game, that's when you're going to go for because you don't want to set up familiar tales and have to go through an entire year of trying to play, and you don't have to paint the minis in Hoplomachus because there are no minis. There we go. <laughs> Why are you doing I, Aeon I don't Trespass? like minis very much. Uh, <laughs> he, he, can't, he can't play Aeon Trespass in those flesh suits with his kids. <laughs> Come on. So uh, this, is, this is a tough one. I have not finished Familiar Tales, mainly because it got left at Peter's house for us oh, to play the campaign together. Black hole, huh? And we're also playing, oh, Sword of Peter's House. We're also playing Frosthaven of Peter's House. We're also playing, maybe I'm bringing Aeon's Trespass over. Ooh. We're also playing Isis Vanguard. So we're never going to finish any of them. Um, it's, just, <laughs> it's just a, uh, yeah, a no man's land of unfinished campaign games. Uh, but I really do like it. Hoplo is only solo, but it's fabulous solo. Familiar Tales is terrible solo, unless you just control all four characters. If you play the official solo mode, it is absolute trash. Sorry, <laughs> but it's great for co-op co and it's very family friendly. I'm more excited to play Familiar Tale in 2023 because I haven't finished it yet. I think Hoplo is the better game. I just voted against Will in the last round. Or sorry, I voted against Mark in the last round. But you will vote against me at some point, so you, you, yeah. you know what's happening. <laughs> God, this is hard. In terms of the actual it's arguments, not. Mark just attacked Will. Will actually brought up things that vaguely matter. Neither of you were great there. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I attacked Will. What's not good about that? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm gonna. I, I'm, I'm a nice guy, Mark. You know that. Except to my own children. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I'm gonna vote for the one that I'm gonna play more in 2023, and that's uh, Familiar Tales. Oh. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Mark. It's not, it's not personal. <laughs> you won't play more. You've got ISS Vanguard to do. You got everything that, like, I'll, I'll theoretically it. play more. Yeah, you're right. I probably never play. And I, I also I got a Artisans of the Splendid Veil. Vale. It's another family friendly campaign game. I'll probably play that first. Oh my god! Yeah. And you also have Galzir, but you can't. No, no take backs. Oh um, god, dang it! Uh, well, that, that, I, that I've already played a ton with my kids. That one, like if I if I had to sell it, I would be okay at this point. You know. All right, Mark, pick one through three. I just did. I know. But so you want me to do it again? Okay, uh, two this time. Okay, this time we have Chaos and Copperforge versus Tainted Grail, Fields of Fields of Ruin? Kings of Ruin. Kings of Ruin. Kings of Ruin. I want to go first, um, yeah. since we haven't heard about this one yet. So yes, uh, Mark, Mark talked about this, and this is very true. I, I have a bad history with Tainted Grail. Um, if For those who are not aware, I named it my Game of the Year, whatever year it came out, 2019, 2020. Um, and then I called it four months later, the reason being, um, I'd only played one campaign, not to completion, but like 70% uh, of the way or so, uh, when I first made it my number one game. And I was high on the systems, I was high on the exploration, I was high on the narrative, I think all those things are amazing. Um, then I tried to play a new campaign with some friends, and the grind, and in my first campaign, I had been lucky enough to guess right and go in the right direction and in my second campaign that didn't happen and backtracking and grinding for resources to relight the men here and grinding for food so we wouldn't starve it became like a bit of a trudge really so that's why i called it and why i kind of reverse track on it some i still think it's a fabulous game but it's a it's a fragile experience you know like if things go wrong it can just waste your time without much to show for it so coming around to kings of ruin they, I don't know if they specifically watched my video on culling it. I, I think there's a, a lot of people were saying similar complaints. So I think that's probably where they came from. 
they went in you know, but speaking of uh, what you said, uh, polishing a diamond, I don't know if it was a diamond to begin with, but there was a diamond in there, Mark. And uh, yeah, they, they have literally <laughs> every, if I went back to my culling video, every complaint I had, they've not only like fixed it, but they fixed it in a clever way generally. So you don't need to eat food at the end of every night anymore. So you don't have to uh, grind for food anymore. You don't have to relight the men here anymore. So that grinding is gone. They made combat a little bit less because the combat system is great, but it got a little bit frustrating if you did it too many times in a row. So you get to appreciate the combat system. I think the narrative is better. I think um, it's a little bit more directed and where you can go. So you don't like kind of get lost kind of seventh continent style. You're not just like wandering in each direction and not having an idea where to go. So I think it is fabulous. It is, uh, yeah, I mean, between this and ISS Vanguard, I, I, I used to not love Awakened Realms and now I'm kind of like completely turned around on them. Um, I, I think it's a triumph of like revision and improvement. So yeah, uh, I mean, m maybe I'll change my mind if I get, I don't know if I'm getting a review copy from, uh, but if I do and I play it, maybe I'll hate it and cull it uh, two days later. But uh, I played the prototype extensively, the first two chapters of the game, uh, many, many hours. And yeah, like I, I didn't have a single negative moment. Everything that was negative in the first game totally revised and they're even like doing like they're taking some of those rules and back mapping them to the first game to make that experience a little bit better but this is certainly the way to play tainted grail in my opinion so uh, I, i'm gonna start i'm just gonna say one if if i don't know if you heard what i heard uh uh high lord barrister judge dainty i heard him take all the credit from his video making this new game better First off, this one for the like that that's what just happened. I know he's got forty thousand subs or whatever, but like wow, wow. Now I also want to point out in his own argument, he said, Well, I might get rid of it after two days. So even he is not convinced about this. So I'll put that now. And then now I've already talked a bit about uh, uh Battle for Greatport, Chaos and Copper Forge. And what I'm gonna call call to my I don't know if you remember when when we played Red Dragon N. Uh, Mark, and I told you my, my wife's favorite character is the Ogre Gog. And the Ogre Gog only hurts people because he's so nice. He's like, oh, Gog love everybody, then everyone takes damage. Well, you can now play Gog. Gog, the lovable ogre, who has these lovely red braids, and he looks like a not quite as attractive version of you, Mark. With your muscles and your lovingness, you can be him in the game. And I'm not taking credit for all of their fixes. <laughs> so here we go. So uh, again, I haven't played the Battle for Greyport expansion, but I have played Red Dragon Inn at your house. And absolutely, that's where uh, you likened your wife to an ogre. Uh, oh, no, you, you said your wife's favorite character was no good. There we go. That's what you actually meant. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but however, I have played the original Taint of Grail, um, and I, it was high up in my list of games when I first played it, and then it dropped up like snow because of all the grind that Mike mentioned. Um, so, yeah, Kings of Ruination, whatever it's called, sounds interesting. Um, but, you know, Awakened Realms, for me, they're better when their games are a more enclosed experience. So I prefer Nemesis or Nemesis mm -hmm. Lockdown or even Great Wall as singular games, if you like, rather than too much bloat going over there. You know, I have my problems with Etherfields, certainly have my problems with Tainted Grail, not played Kings of Ruination, cannot get Awakened Realms to send me a game for love nor money anyway. Uh, so this well, to be fair, I, I think for money, I think for money, you yeah. <laughs> 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 So yeah, for, I have to take all of these factors into consideration. Now, we've already got ISS Vanguard, which is going through as an Awakened Realms game. Did that go through? Did it? Did it? No, it did not. No, he, no, no, no it didn't. But, Oh, Hoplo beat that, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. So this is the last Awakened Realms game on the list, I think, yeah. Uh, however, you know, we've got this game that was broken when it first came out. In fact, both games are reflective of broken games. Oh, yeah, the it's first a game out. Yeah, yeah. One, the fix the original game. Uh, and, you know, now you can buy it and give you a print-to-play option. The other one, they're asking you to buy more or less the same game, again, just with a different rule set. 
So for that, that reason only, in the fact that the investment on getting the right game for Greyport is a lot less than buying almost the same game again, slightly different story, but, you know, cut out all the mechanisms. And I, let's face it, Tainted uh, Awaken Realms could not have done this without Mike's help. So I'm going to go for <laughs> Battle for Greyport in this, in this, in this instance. Yeah, winner! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, Mike, one or two? One. Okay, oh, this is where my streak ends, I think. We have Unsettled versus Monasterium. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, Unsettled, are you familiar with Unsettled, Mark? Uh, I've backed the second printing out. Okay, yeah, okay. Never, never played it, yep. Yeah, so for those who don't know, Unsettled is a solo co-op uh, planet exploration game. It's actually in theme quite similar to ISS Vanguard. Let's uh, talk about a few cool things with it. Um, even though it is like an adventure game, it's one of the most like Euro-ish, and not a pejorative way for people to like Euros, but uh, like combos, tactical actions, really like intense like strategy to beat the missions. In how you move, you, you unlock these like cool technology powers that let you cooperatively work together to do really neat things. Um, it's one of the best like kind of puzzles of any game I've played in a long time. That's why it's one of my top games of the year. I also went uh, all in on the expansion uh, planets, Mark. Um, yeah, so I, I absolutely adore this game. I think um, it has the adventure sensibilities to appeal to like Ameritrash gamers. I think it has um, the crunchy, puzzly, tactical clever gameplay like you will feel smart playing this game to appeal to euro players and, and something i'll call out because i think this is so rare in video games or not video games uh role play, uh, jesus every other game <laughs> except board games so rare in board games <laughs> um unsettled has legitimately hilarious writing like it's actually funny I, I everyone i've played it with has laughed out loud at some of the things they say it's it's uh, sort of like this wry kind of like dry british i would say sort of kind of humor uh, to it, like as you go through the adventures and things. So yeah, um, I, I Monasterium certainly sounds like a game, um, <laughs> and and Unsettled is an amazing game. Uh, so yeah, and Mark, I know you're, you're already excited about it, so uh, I think you should vote for it. And and I will say just to throw myself on the mercy of the court, um, I think this is my only game left in the bracket. <laughs> so <laughs> so you know I'll just be an observer for the rest of the time, Mark. If you take me out, you know, to say that. Okay. First off, do we even know if it's a video game, a role-playing game? Is it a book, like an audio book? I don't know. No one knows what this is. Also, I, I played Unsettled, which is a board game, Michael. It's a board game. <laughs> if funny it is, British? British humor? No, 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 no. Like, no. Definitely not. He he does he doesn't even know your people, Mark. He doesn't know your people. Okay, <laughs> he knows nothing. Okay. Now, let's talk about just a little bit the mechanics, the real mechanics of Monasterium. Because I just kind of glossed over it. So here's the cool thing about Monasterium. So at the beginning of the turn, you start with a dice rolling phase. You take your dice, and you can get more dice as you go through. Uh, you're gonna roll your dice. And you're going to pick one of those numbers. I'm going to take all my fives, put all my fives out on the board. Whatever. You're going to go around. Everyone's going to do that till there's no dice left. So you might have nothing on the one, three dice on the three, one dice on the four, whatever it is. And as you go around on your turn, you're going to pick all the dice from one of those numbers and you're going to use them. And there's a little bit of you can save certain dice, you know, just for you, you know, there's ability to do that. But not only do you have the fun Euro goodness in the donkey cart, don't forget the donkey cart, donkey cart's great, of uh, the game, the tableau building, and you got a little, the, the stained glass windows, like a little Sudoku style puzzle, you can't put the same thing next to it, very, very cool. But you have to manage your dice resources, where you put them out at the beginning, while you're rolling the dice, you're picking, ah, I, oh, it's great, there's all these fours, but of course, Mike's going first. So he's just going to take all my fours. I'm not even going to get those fours. They're going to be gone. So you kind of, all those choices that you have in built into the dice rolling and dice. Yeah, you'd like dice rolling, Mark. I know you do. 
you like to roll, roll some dice, and you like some drafting, and you can even be mean to the other person across the table as you're setting up the dice draft or as you're drafting the dice. If that does not say Mark Dainty, donkey cart, being mean to the person that wronged you across the table, I don't know what does. Unsettled. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, 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 I knew. I, now, next, now we, when we play Monasteria, Mark, you're gonna be like, "Dang, that's a, it's a hard sell. It's a, it's a very good game, and you know, Unsettled is very fun. I just uh, for Christmas for Don, I just painted some of his uh, his Unsettled minis for him. Oh, that's cool, cool. man. Like cool. it's a, uh, yeah, very, those are nice. Those are nice little minis. I like like the little uh, robot helper guy you have and that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, it, it that that's a fun game and it's got a lot it's got a lot of replay like at first like well you're yeah. gonna keep playing these things no it's that's a good game so i i'm I, looking I forward to it yeah i can't fault fault it i tried you know. well, and, and I'll, I'll say well you've made me more interested to play monasterium like legitimately um the, the dice thing i know it's not that similar but it kind of reminds me of uh the other one y'all turned me on to the uh Ping Yao, is that the the dice? Oh thing? yeah, 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 Ping yeah, Yao. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I, I'm, I'm kind of into this like dice drafting Euro idea. I just think it's kind of neat. Yeah, it's it it, it it's good stuff. It's good stuff. I, I gotta definitely gotta gotta get my button gear and make a solo for it. All right, here comes the one that hurts me the most because Oathsworn was my top pick, but Mark took it from me. Mark who has eliminated Mike almost completely from this bracket. I just saved him. Versus, <laughs> versus, well, that's just because he, it was up against Monasterium that, that no one was even, I don't know, I should, <laughs> that was a poor choice on my part. It's fun, but oh, poor choice. Versus Lunar Rush, like Vin Diesel, Mike knows that family is what matters. Oh, matters. Well, so let me, let, uh, let, let me stop you. Um, I think all you say Mark stole it from you. Oathsworn was also my number one game of this year. <laughs> um, oh, can that's I just, true. Can, I, just, can, I, just say, can I just say Oathsworn without without debate? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Oh, come on, right, go ahead, go ahead. Make make your argument. Make your argument. I, I, I am totally impartial and open to either choice. Yeah, yeah. So here's what I'm going to say. Now I know that you have the benefit of having Peter's house to put stuff in. <laughs> okay. But I want you to think of how much space that thing takes up. Oh, and the man. prototype that you had of Lunar Rush is not the actual size. It is one or two millimeters uh, mm. uh, thinner. Okay. So that's the box size. That's a lot. Inch for inch. I would say you might get more game <laughs> inch for inch out of Lunar Rush than you get out of the other one. And the other thing that you get in Lunar Rush is you have a lot of simultaneous play mm, going on, yep, which true. is always exciting. Depending on who you're playing with, with a game like Oathsworn, you could have a lot of sitting and waiting, a lot of hemming and hawing, and sometimes the dice and the cards just hate you and you just get waxed. And unlike a lot of uh, uh, dungeon crawls and stuff out there, it's not a it's not a fail forward game. Mm. It's not a fail forward. It's a do it again. All right, Mark, go ahead. <clears throat> wow. Okay. Uh, Will Brown's number one game of the year was was Oswan. Michael Kelly's number one game of the year was <laughs> Oswan. Most people's game of the year was Oswan. But I not Mark was... Dainty's. He has it. That is not fair. Uh, <laughs> I haven't published my list just yet, um, but I do have Oathsworn. Obviously, I've played Lunar Rush. Like Oathsworn rewrote the book, basically. What it did is it had a look at all the dungeon crawlers or adventure games that are out there, had a look at everything that was wrong with them that put people off, and then corrected all those and put it into that first package. Now, it's not a perfect game. Of course, it's not. But when you look at a game, we just talked about uh, Tainted Grail, Kings of Ruination where they had to make Tainted mm -hmm. Grail to then correct it to do this. Oathsworn hits every branch on that tree that you're looking for in this kind of game. Superb narrative. Well, really engaging narrative. They're engaging it uh, uh, kind of... Uh, Wait, narrative I, I got to pause you for a second. Did you just hit every branch on a tree into positive? I've only heard that as like, 
the ugly <laughs> tree and hitting every branch no, falling down. Like, like when, when yeah. is that a positive thing? <laughs> that, that so remember that he, he just compared. <laughs> I think he compared you, Mike, to someone who hit every branch on the ugly tree on the way down. I think you it said depends. that, Will. <laughs> yeah, but he, but but he, I had to clarify because he was speaking British. If you're a bird and you miss a branch, that's a bad thing, all right? If you're a bird and you hit a branch and you land on it, that's a good thing. So what it does is it hits every mark that it's looking for. It gives you that, Did you that just call the fat of... bird that's breaking the branches? What is happening here? If you're looking for that really good, engaging narrative, well written with fantastic narration by James Cosmo from uh, Game of Thrones, mm. uh, that then links into this wonderful... Uh, kind of these boss battles and it does boss battles right not only that but you can just play the boss battles if you want you can instantly level up you can go back and do fights everything's hidden away in boxes as well so you don't know what's coming next the next time you play through it Oswan is a masterpiece in how to do things basically uh it's kind of rewritten the books any kind of adventure game that comes forward post Oath Sworn will always be chasing its coattails that's why it's rated so highly by so many people Lunar Rush it's a game about space it's more than that. But... Inch. Inch. More gameplay. Um, so that's right. What's interesting so. about Osorn is that not only might Heat, like a little bit post-2022, not only might Heat have inched above it for me, but Aeon Trespass Odyssey that I've been playing a ton of might yeah. also be inching above it a little bit for me. But it is excellent. And um yeah, I mean, I, I got it. I, I already took out one game just because, like, I thought it was too good and I didn't want it to just be destroy the entire bracket. Oswarn's another one. I, I got to let it go. I, I can't be the guy that takes down Oswarn. That would be just too much of a, of a of a random, like, you know, chaos for chaos's sake. So I'm going to put Oswarn through. Uh, the thing, by the way, uh, what Mark was saying, I think it's true. I hope, like, the big thing, we just talked about how, like, uh, Familiar Tales has a weak solo mode. You know, an Aeon Trespass, you got to always run four characters. I hope more games go the Osworn route and let you kind of have like helper characters or less full characters, like to match your player yeah. count and match your preferences. Such a genius design thing. I just want to call that out as many yeah. times as I can. Yeah, that, that that that's one of my favorite things. It's e even to the point to where it's a way that someone who's like new to the game. It's oh, yeah. A way to introduce yeah. them to it here. I, I showed I showed my kid, like we didn't play the whole thing, but we played a few rounds of it with him being one of the like helper characters. Cause all he had to do was like move and do his one ability over and over again. Yeah. It was super simple for him. It's great. But it's also, I think the, the good thing as well, which is like a game like Gloomhaven where you have to lock the next characters with this. If you want to play with a different character, you just swap them out basically. Yes. And that's a really, really great thing to do. So you have the variability in the companion characters as well as full characters, but also just the ability to change the members of your free company, which is just, it's great. It just allows you to experience more of the game rather than yeah. putting it behind. Not well, a pain, even, though, but putting the locket behind something. Yeah. In my solo campaign, I didn't change out the members. I kept the same four people. But a big thing for yeah. me, like with Gloomhaven, and this kind of happened with Hoplo as well, and any of these like really long campaign games where you have one character, I got bored with the one character, and Osorn yeah. just let me... Okay, now that archer is the like the uh, the helper, and now the thief yeah. is the full character. Okay, and after a few minutes with that, now like I kept my same four party, but I swapped who like it's kind of like I was highlighting a leader, you know, for a yeah. few plays, and then highlighting a new leader. So I yeah, I mean it's just genius, genius. But let's get back to the bracket. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so we're at the final four. Oh shoot, we have unsettled versus the only not game with the buy. Chaos and Copper Forge. It's the only one that made it through from the first round. Then Familiar Tales versus Oath Swarm. Mm. <laughs> and I think let's let's start with the Unsettled versus Chaos and Copper Forge because we just talked about Oath Swarm. All right. So here's where we are here. Okay, Mark. Okay, Mark. Look. You like games, Mark. <laughs> you like games, right? So. And you like to play games with your family on occasion, right? On occasion. I see you play with your wife. I see it. Occasionally, very occasionally, yeah. Yeah, very, very occasionally, right? And I've met your wife. What Unsettled has that you don't get in Chaos and Copper Forge is there's the ability to be an alpha gamer 
It's there. And all of us, all of us who play a lot of games, every now and then, despite our best efforts, it can pop out. And for your safety, Mark, your safety, if you pop out Alpha Gamer with your wife, you might die. She's not taking that. You're not going to tell her what to do, how to play her turn. You can't do that. That's not going to happen in Battle for Greatport because you've got to make your own choice of what you want to give and help somebody on their turn. you got to save for yourself. So you're caring for the other person and yourself at the same time. And so for your safety, Mark, you got to go with Chaos and Copper Forge. Okay. All right, so the big argument I'll make, uh, by the way, I agree with Will. Uh, Battle for Greyport, fabulously cooperative game. Now, the limitation is it's really only at its best, in my opinion, with three plus players. Solo is a little bit awkward, and two players not the best way to play the game. Um, Unsettled is great at all player counts. And the big thing I'll say, uh, a, a knock I have against Battle for Greyport is that it has very, li- it's a deck builder. We like deck builders. We like deck building. Is a deck builder with a very small, repetitive market. You play the game twice, you'll have seen every card you can add to your deck, basically. And the deck is this thick. Get out of here with that. Yeah, and they repeat a lot of things. And Chaos and Copper Forge adds uh, how many uh, cards to the market decks? Do you know, Will? Uh, I, I don't. I don't remember. It's zero. Zero uh, but, cards. But, to, uh, but it adds all. They add the contraptions. The I like the contraptions. robot cards. Yes, which but are it adds. It had zero more interesting choices to make in the buying phase of the game. I still love it, by the way. I'm, I'm just I'm just pointing out. Sounds Unsettled, like even if you don't buy all the extra expansions, each planet has at least three very different scenarios. Each planet itself is a totally varied experience with its own like unique uh, research cards, its own unique combo cards, its own unique objectives, its own like fun mechanics. You know, playing on the world with the Tentacle creatures is totally different than playing on the world with the sandstorm is totally different than playing on the world with the memories of the alien races. And they got even more coming in the expansion. So now, if you want variety, on, if you want variety, on. as much every as I love single, every single boss that you fight in Copper Forge has, has slightly different keywords. No, they don't. I love the game. They do not. That is the summoner is different. Some of the pirates are different. Like it's, a, it's, it's a great game. Variety is not the its best. The Hydra is different. The Hydra is Werewolf different. Werewolf is different. Barely. Barely. They are they are all different. You're just playing on he doesn't know the game. And you're no, out I, I have, the argument, it, which proves my point that Mark might die if he picks Unsettled in his house. <clears throat> are we are we finished now? Because that became, I'll, you know. I'll just throw out for you that something that that great port does that is different than any other deck builder I played is the actual yeah. combat when you're fighting is not deterministic. You okay. you actually get get uh, a dice and stuff that are thrown in there as you're going. Okay, it's a difficult bracket this because uh, I've played neither game basically. Uh, so I know great port has potentially got through on a wing and a prayer to where it is right now. But at least I've played something related to Greyport where I haven't with Unsettled. I've not played any Unsettled whatsoever. Missed the first Kickstarter, back the second Kickstarter. Probably arrive sometime this year, next year. I don't know. Now, Will quite rightly brought my mic into this. And of course, I do not want to upset Neve. He's met Neve. He knows that a fire, the fiery Irish woman in her will destroy me if I try to tell her what to do at any point, irrespective of whether it's in board games whatsoever. However, however... I also think that was a bit of a sneaky argument to bring in there at the same time, Will, you see. You're bringing my family into the fight here, and I don't know whether that counts for it. I've been so. bringing family in all, all the whole time. <laughs> I've been bringing family in the whole time, so that's not new. That's not new. So, uh, you know, part of me, because, you know, we know... In fact, you were left right. out, because my family had been in it. Mike's family's been in it. <laughs> so part of me actually wants to put Greyport up against Oathsworn in the next round uh, just to see how it fares and who argues the best for that and what the final outcome is but in reality uh, I do think that uh, although I've not played either of them I think Unsettled is the game that I want to play the most out of these so I'm going to go with Greyport. Unsettled Al- Alpha Gamer or not I'm going to go with Unsettled <laughs> I'm going to write down Greyport and that's gonna be- <laughs> yeah Hey, well, don't don't feel bad. We're making you the final judge, the the decider yeah. of deciders. Oh, we at the don't end. know this yet. Oh, yeah, okay. Go. go ahead. Talk talk to your game. Go tales. ahead. <laughs> Versus Oathsworn. Go ahead. Mark. Do you want to go? 
Well, 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 Mark. All right. So no, go ahead and come up with a new argument, please. Something new. This, this is this is the thing, right? That I could do that. That's something that Familiar Tales hasn't done is come up with something new. You see, what they've done is they're rehashing everything, and I, so I could just rehash the same argument, package it up, and call it Familiar Tales. You see, and that's the issue with it. Is yes, you've got a campaign that's going to take you a year to complete, but maybe Oats <laughs> one takes a year to complete. I, know. I was going to say, I don't, I don't I, think you're going to win I, on a time I, argument I, with no. Oats one. <laughs> But I, I know if you're going to commit time to play to try and finish one campaign, it's got to be Oatsworn. You know the uh, the the sense of excitement you get when you open up a new box or a new envelope to get your next monster out if you not know what it is. How it's going to fight very differently with those uh, with those stage decks and with the encounter boards, etc. There's all that coming to you, and you don't know where the story is going. Will how much story and how much narrative does Familiar Tales have? A ton. Oh yeah, ridiculous amount. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Like, like, <laughs> th th thank you for starting my my argument for no, me. No, that's fine. But oh, did, did James Cosmo narrate any of it though? Actually, well, uh, they, no. Uh, but they have a full <laughs> cast. Yeah, they, 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 have, they have actual cast. like characters and dialogue. So I, I would say actually it's okay. kind of better than Oswald. Sorry. <laughs> so, that's fine. So what they've done is they've they put talking. a lot of they, they put a lot of cost behind that and bumped up the cost of a game which potentially didn't need all that. Oswald. <laughs> by, as I say, taking everything that people want and managed to streamline it into this wonderful experience wait, where wait, 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 one wait. actor do the narration. All in of Oathsworn is like $300. You don't have to go all in. And you hold on, <laughs> hold on. Like $300 and a storage shed. Yep. In on Familiar Tales is $70 and is the size of a Ticket to Ride box. Yeah, but you don't have to go all in. You could just get the standing okay, fine. Oathsworn and not miss out on anything. Okay, one hundred and sixty dollars, and half a storage shed. <laughs> okay, but where, where was Familiar Tales on your top ten list of the year, Will? It was number two. It was number um, two. What was number one? What was number one? I don't remember. Now <laughs> you asked. <laughs> now, but, but what I will say, what I will say about that is that was uh, other than the first year I did one, was the hardest choice I've had to make of trying to decide sure. which one falls where. And what, if you remember, what was the deciding factor for me was simply that with Oathsworn, you can just drop in and just do one. That was the deciding. Now, Mark's been banging on about how there's, well, first off, he's been banging about a bunch of stuff that Familiar Tales completely does. But he said that it doesn't do anything that's new and different. And okay, I, you know, I've played a lot of adventure games. I haven't played one that, you know, does the combination of deck building over time. Right, not like because a lot of you like uh, even a great board. If you play another game, you're resetting the decks, but you're building these decks over time. But what it does do that I thought was very unique, ties right in with that great story, are the three eras. Because mm -hmm. Mark, you don't know this, you play the game in three different eras. In the first era, the princess that uh, that you're protecting is a baby, and oh, you literally have to oh, carry princess. her. Then, <laughs> one third of the way through the game, she becomes a toddler. <laughs> However, the toddler, what, how she behaves, is she unruly and unmanageable? Or is she, you know, a little more of a little goody goody with her own issues is solely determined by the choices that you've made and how you've done, how much misfortune you've gotten will change what she's like in that second era. And both, both of them, whether she's more unruly or more goody goody, have benefits to it. Then you get to the third era and she becomes a uh, young adult. With again, she either goes down the dark path where she has like destructive powers, or you go down the the more proper path and she has more helpful healing powers, which also affects the end of the game. Okay, so it is parenting the board game. I mean, Mike, after a heavy heavy weekend with the kids, do you really want to play a board game about parenting? As I mean, well? oh, Mark, you don't even know. You have to change the baby's <laughs> diaper. You have to feed the baby, keep it from crying. It's it's, it's a lot. Like a Tamagotchi, yeah. yeah so... But but, I, but it, it's a lot easier to change that diaper than. Um... <laughs> That's true. Cause, cause Just the, one oh, action uh... done, nice and easy. <laughs> you know, see a little cloth. And, and the fun fact about that is, as you're going through, if you fail that check. Because you have to, you can make a check and you can fail that check. Clearly, that means you took the diaper off and then it peed on you. Like that's that fail. So it even brings in a little bit of reality wow. in, in, in in that fun so, way. But again, the diaper change. It's your like argument. That. Your argument is that you can change a nappy in a board game. 
This is this is the crux of what you're saying. What Familiar Tales is. And, and, and your argument about why not for Familiar Tales was everything that's great about it that you said it didn't have, but it does. <laughs> yeah, the blow it. Is. And just remember, Mike, which one do you want to go up against in the finale? <laughs> oh, geez, don't put it that way. Um, yeah. yeah, you I know mean, it's interesting. Uh, Two-time winner of the Three Idiots. It's the. <laughs> It, it is really interesting to compare these two games because they do have similarities. I think uh, I think Ostorn has the more unique setting. I think it probably has this better writing somewhat. I think Familiar Tales has the better app and the better narration experience. Nappies. As amazing as Ostorn is. Um, <laughs> yes. I think they both have really good card play in different ways. I really do enjoy the core mechanic of card play in... Uh, Familiar Tales, and of course, the O Sworn like kind of cooldown system is great. Um, two things are going to push me if I'm being like honest and not trying to just game the system and like actually voting for real. Uh, the big things are, as I uh, as Mark pointed out, like last time we talked about O Sworn, and then as we talked about last time we talked about Familiar Tales. Familiar Tales has a pretty terrible official variant for like changing up player count. Whereas Oathsworn has one of the best, finest, most thoughtful variants for changing up player count I have ever seen in a game of this type ever. Like literally of any dungeon crawler slash boss battler, like tactical battle game I've ever seen. Um, so that's a big knock against it. The other thing is uh, Familiar Tales, I love it. Uh, there were many times, I've only played through the first of the three eras. There were many times in there where I would uh, not have much to do. Just kind of like the design of the thing. Like I'd just be kind of wandering around doing nothing. Osworn, I feel like, is very dynamic every round until each of those bosses is defeated. So yeah, I, I think, uh, again, I might play Familiar Tales more than Osworn because I can play that with my kids and Osworn is three giant boxes at Peter's house. I don't even know if I'd keep it if it was at my house. <laughs> if I was forced wow, to look at it every day, I'd be like, eh. Um, but yes, I'm going to vote Osworn and put it in the finals wow. against Unsettled. Sorry, sorry. But hey, you, you maybe want to play Familiar Tales more, Will. So I think you have succeeded quite admirably here. Yeah, and I, what I will say, you know what? Had you had you played uh, Era Two, you I think you may have changed your mind. It does Era look really cool. I'm very interested to see like Era with Two the girl being a miniature on the board, like actually kind of part of the battles seems super cool because I <laughs> I like those kind of things in. Uh, in tactical video games like it definitely appeals to me looking at like my experience and stuff yeah era two really picks up and you, you it's more of a kind of managing the toddler she'll mm -hmm. kind of run off and do her own little thing sometimes whereas in era three you're controlling her right right yeah but no, it sounds cool i've seen it at the at my local gaming store i just haven't uh, picked it up just don't know if you've got time for another campaign game at the moment that's the thing with with everything that's there well, and so, again yeah. uh, mark i think it's awkward for pure solo because really the only yeah. good way to play pure solo i think is to have four separate hands of cards and you're like Which assisting each match. other so like what i had to do is i just had them all face out kind of splayed so yeah. I could like see what I wanted to help myself with because the, the official solo is just so bad. Like it actively yeah. ruins many aspects of the great gameplay. Yeah, let's see, let's see. I, I don't I didn't think it was terrible, but it's definitely I I, I forehanded it and it was Yeah, yeah, no, like I said, I think it works it's pretty fine. Cool. I just, what I do would like to try if I ever would go through it again, I'd be curious to try pairing them. Yes, because that works pretty well. If you put both of the range characters together and both of the melee, I tried that and it was okay. I yeah. still like forehanded better, but it was okay. Yeah, I thought forehand was great. It's really easy. And Mark, what I will say as a pitch to perhaps you know, pick it up sometime, I played almost the entirety of Familiar Tales uh, in a hotel room. I would take it with me when I was going on these school cool. school trips I'd go on, and I'd go back after work, and it just, I just left it set up on like the desk. Yeah. yeah, and it's one of those ones, Mark, with like the opening book, which I adore. Like every game should yeah. do that if they can do it, you know? Yeah. All right. Okay, so here we are at the finale. And despite my having the best win percentage going through, somehow I find myself on the outs at the end, which is very devastating to me because two years in a row, I'm not even in competition for the well, win. Well, it was it was your choice of monasterium. Yeah, that was that was that was you know that was your Achilles heel right there. No, it was that you got oath sworn. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, and again, I, I specifically didn't put it on the list I sent you because I knew at least one of you would be doing it. So I just left it off. Otherwise, we could have had a three-way fight over who got a sword. Yeah, and, you know, but I, I will say uh, I was I was very pleased at the the showing made by uh, Chaos and Copper Forge and, and Lunar Rush. I didn't think they would, uh, and Monastery. I didn't think any of those would get as far as as they did. So I'm feeling 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 good about that. Everyone, go buy those games. All right, here we go. The finale. Unsettled versus Oathsworn. Mark versus Mike again. Now, I want you guys to know all the arguments that have already been made for these games, I don't care. I'm looking for new stuff only. And remember, I'm very butthurt right now. So, <laughs> whoever wants to go first, take it away. Mike, you go first. Because he's like, I got to think of something new. <laughs> <laughs> um, Unsettled has, I believe, only five miniatures. It is a, and they're lovely miniatures, as you said, Will. You can have an awesome painted experience with Unsettled in a tiny amount of time and have a game that looks beautiful because the art and like cards and stuff are great and then have these miniatures that pop on it. Will, you already have experience with how quick it is. If you were trying to paint uh, whatever that other game is called, Aeon Trespass Oath Haven, um, then, you know, not you know, only- that, that game would, would sell a hundred million dollars. Not Trespass. only, if, if you had the miniature version, not only would you have to paint like all the heroes and their arms are falling off the whole time. These miniature, the, I don't know if you've heard about this, Will, since you've only played the Stanny version, but like there are a lot of problems with these like- Oh, it, it comes arms. with the heroes as minis. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you've seen they're, they're kind of problematic. So they're a hassle to paint. They don't stick together too well unless you glue them. And then on top of that, you got to open 18, 19 boxes. And you're either playing with it the first year. So you're either pausing your game in the middle of the campaign when you uh, get to a new boss, open up this box and stopping playing for like a week while you paint that miniature so you can actually have a painted miniature or you have this gray mishmash on your boards or you're ruining all the mystery of the game and opening all the boxes up front. And then you gotta put them back in the boxes. Like it's a painting nightmare, unsettled, respects your time, Will. They're like, hey, are, are you a, a, you know an amateur painter who likes things to look pretty but wants to feel accomplished? With unsettled, you're gonna feel accomplished in very short order. With Osworn, even if you have the standee version, you're in for a lot of work, a lot of stress, a lot of hassle. Can't you just enjoy your games? And, uh, you know, Unsettled is not a super cheap game if you go in for like all the planets, but it's still no Oatsworn, as you said yourself, for familiar tales. So there you go. What you got, Mark? Well, I, you know, I think there's two things there. Well, first of all, Will, I know you enjoy painting miniatures, right? So to restrict your enjoyment to just five similar looking miniatures from Unsettled, you know, you know, it's not the greatest thing in the world, basically, for that. What you're doing there is you're taking choice away from Will. Secondly, let's talk about the all-in for Oathsworn, right? Okay, if you just went for the standee version, that's all the gameplay, one box, everything complete. I don't know if you can see the screen there. That's unsettled all-in, all 12 boxes. It makes Oathsworn look like, I don't know, a Micro Machine set, quite frankly. It's, you know, that's a lot of bloody boxes you've got to get for the all-in of Unsettled. Well, but, that, and, that's, you know, but I got to say, it's because each of those boxes is one of the most beautiful examples of perfect storage I've ever seen. All you need to play the game is some stuff from the main box in one of those boxes, and you're good to go. Um, no, I, I, do have to, you, I do have to question, Mark. Did you just compare... The all in for one to the not all in of the other as your argument? No, no, no. What I'm saying is, is you get all the gameplay in Unsworn in the base box. You don't in Unsettled. Yes? He's right. You get, He's right. All, of, you get all, okay, all the gameplay uh, thank you for in clarifying. across 12 boxes. Yes, because yes, yes. I was going to say you had just definitely lost if that was your argument. <laughs> well, so you know, the, the, th the one is, is more boxes than the not all in of the other. <laughs> so right. what you've got is, you know, you've got people who are greedy, who want all the plastic, who want to destroy the environment, like Mike. Uh, then he's going to get all of the boxes of Oathsworn, of course, yeah. Uh, however, you will be the obviously the uh, the environmentally focused person that you are, concerned about the planet. You go right back to the first argument about weather machine. You get everything you need in one box of Oathsworn, which you will fit into a Kallax cube, and that's it. All of those uh, unsettled boxes will take up 
all of your Kallax cubes. So I think the argument is moot about space and storage, about painting miniatures. Yes, so, you know, there is a little bit of gluing to be done on the uh, on the hero miniatures for Oswald. But you so so, so wait, wait a second, Bef before we leave the size argument, um, I, I have unsettled everything <laughs> at least so far. Mm -hmm. Those boxes aren't very big. Uh, if you put all of them next to each other, it is a smaller volume than one Oathsword box, I'm pretty sure, or about the same. So, so you don't say you have, like, you don't have like 15 calyxes for unsettled or anything. And I, 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 Unnecess I, 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 Unnecessary packaging. That's Mark, what that I, is I will there. say I'm a little yeah. insulted by uh, uh, the reference to calyxes, which I have none. And so I feel like <laughs> I'm talking down. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we have obviously also one is more environmentally sound uh it's a better experience for painters uh it allows you the optionality of putting you know putting your arms in a little bit of a different position on your miniatures unlike uh, you know the five miniatures you get in unsettled and of course we all know it is by far and away the better game so when we're looking at this you know it has to be without a shadow of a doubt you have to choose Oathsworn as the game of the year wow that's a uh, so I do. I, I have some some questions here. So, did you just say that Oath Sword is more environmentally sound with all the the plastic and the cardboard? And no, the, the base game is the more base environmentally game. sound than the, the base, base game. game settled. But no, the base game, the standee version of Oath Sword, with everything in there. Yeah, it's better than these <laughs> twelve. More, these twelve un, more plastic these 12, than settled. The 12 unnecessary boxes. The manufacturing process has to go into producing 12 boxes. You don't understand cardboard. I do. It's a, it, it's a, oh, it's a beefy, horrible game. Yeah, so. Is, is, that, is that a British thing? Cardboard? <laughs> okay, so so that, that was my, 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 my first question there. Uh, I, I will also, don't worry, Mark, Mike, I'm coming for you. Uh, <laughs> Mark, you also said that Mike was greedy because he has the all-in of the Oathsworn. What Oathsworn yeah. version do you have? I didn't say I wasn't greedy. I just said Mike was greedy. <laughs> okay. I never okay. claimed to not be greedy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, let's see. We've got the boxes there. Now, Mike, the big thing that I have with you is you knocked me out of the final. Yeah, I, I, I did. I mean, two years in a row. You knocked me out of the You fire. remember what happened last year way better than I did. I just remembered that... Uh, I'll take uh, your word for it. I just remember that I wasn't in the in the final, so I have to Ow. assume that it was you. Um, <laughs> that might not even be true. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. Um, now, I also have to say, you did talk about the painting. I do like painting minis. And I did actually paint all four of the base characters for Unsettled hmm. in about two hours. Whereas I did paint the four heroes that I'm using for Oathsworn was probably about four hours. Yeah. Plus I had to paint, you know, the, the little ally guys in case I died, you know. And then of course, if one of my characters died, I got to put another one together. And then a friend wanted to play, so I had to put together and paint the character that they wanted to play. So there's a lot going on there. But I've only played Unsettled once. I've only played it once. And it was fun. It was really hard. And we lost very badly. I think I turned into a fungus. And I hate mushrooms. With every fiber of my being, I hate mushrooms and i turned into a mushroom and unsettled on the other hand do i want oath sworn to win two of the three games of the year that i've been involved with now it did get knocked out in the beatrice the board game dog tourney early on blew up a bunch of brackets but based solely on i hate mushrooms Though Mark almost lost it with his shenanigans about box size and Kalax snobbery, I have to give it to Oathsworn. Take your victory lap, Mark. 
Thank you very much. I'd say worthy, worthy. It's all right, tell you the truth. I don't mind the game. It's not nothing special. Uh, no, it's a worthy, worthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be amazing <laughs> if, if if now he does his his ten worst games of the year. Worst game, worst one. Oh, okay. that would be. Wow. <laughs> No, it's a worthy winner, and I can see why it's obviously high up on a lot of people's lists. As we mentioned, we all loved Oath, or loved and are loving Oath Sworn as well. It's a huge time sink. You know, that's one of the things going against it. Uh, and uh, I not got far enough through the campaign to find out whether the battles, uh, the boss battles, become repetitive, or you know, I should imagine over the kind of twenty-one battles, there's going to be some. Some that aren't great. I think Will, you didn't enjoy uh, Scenario Five, did you? As much, I don't think. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that, that was my, my my least favorite. Um, to the point to where, because I found I so far I found the first fight had been the hardest by far. The first right. one I thought was really really hard, and then I, I did well through the next two, and then like the fourth and fifth one, I breezed through them. I was like, oh, maybe it's going away. And then I did the sixth one and almost lost. I think yeah, right, I sent okay. uh, uh, Mike a picture, and he just he's like, "Oh, I, I hate those bastards," you know. And it just it really picked back up. And I will say, through the six I've done so far, every single one has been completely different, and I've been surprised. And uh, our yeah, friend yeah. Barrett has played, I think, through ten of them, yeah. and he's told me that they keep getting, you know, uh, they keep coming up with new stuff. So it, yeah, it's true. I've, got, I've gone through eight or nine. There's like a little bit of repetition. Don't spoil anything, and not all of them are like absolute bangers but there's a lot of really good stuff in there yeah yeah it's a shame that you know a game like i don't know um red dragon in or uh or lunar rush didn't get through to the final as well that would have been great to see through one of those through to the final uh i think also being on the ticket was always going to be because we would have all chosen it i mean it was to, always going to be, be fair you be. know one of those others getting to the final was literally your fault mark yeah, I realized that. Yeah, I realized that. <laughs> like you literally didn't pick them. <laughs> yeah, them. but that's that. That wasn't the game. That's because they were your games. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah. But I do think you know. I think we all agree that uh, through this very scientific method that we've got here, which is kind of you know, it's been it's been uh, proven by NASA scientists to be the most scientific and accurate method of predicting and uh, sorting out game of the year I outside of blueberries, the right? Concrete. Outside of blueberries, of course, we come to the right conclusion. <laughs> I, I, at least I'm I'm pleased that um, a game that neither that two of us had never even heard of didn't win this year, like last uh, year. Yes, yeah. Exceed. What was it up against last year? Exceed. Uh, whatever you had. I think it was some serious butt hurt. Is is why was it Voidfall? Uh, with the Exceed, I think might have been Voidfall. Void for I mean, hey, yeah. Exceed is one of my most played games of this year. Probably one of my most played games of 2023. It's a fantastic oh, you know, had, game. Had, uh, I will say, had Tainted Grail go, go, gone on further, I would have had to point out that uh, Mike's Tainted Grail box is full of another game. It's full nope. of Exceed. I think. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I have I have the prototype because they, they let me keep the prototype and I sent it to Barrington uh, Town, but they didn't care about get, having the box. So I kept this very large box to fit my like 50 Exceed characters that I bought over the years. <laughs> <laughs> all right so oh go ahead mark no no it's fine no, go. Yeah. all right so uh there you have it folks that is another uh i don't know hour and a half or whatever of just complete nonsense from us uh check down in the description there's links to one stop co-op shop and not board gaming make sure you're checking out all the stuff that they do and uh i'll just mike go first any, any of your closing thoughts no, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I said this in my other top lists and things, but I think this uh, last year was one of my, I, I, my top 20 list was so strong almost all the way down. So I think this was a better year for gaming than many others I can think of in the past. Yeah. Mark, I, any I, final thoughts? I think, I, I, yeah, I mean, I've not been uh, board game as long as you guys, but uh, again, I was looking as I'm putting my top 10 list together or my my kind of favorite solo games of the year together. It was a really, really strong, strong year when you got games like, I don't know, like Lacrimosa coming out of almost nowhere, which, you know, it's, I've, I've really enjoyed Lacrimosa and Heat. These games that you weren't necessarily thinking about at the beginning of the year. Uh, some big releases have finally come to fruition. I know a lot of people have got Frosthaven. Uh, I've got Frostpunk on the table. We've talked about Aeon's Trespass Odyssey. Um, yeah, it feels like it was a, a good, good year last year. There was some 
conventions were up and running. I've really, really enjoyed VidCon the last 12 months. Uh, looking forward to this next year. Uh, lots of conventions, Aircon, UK Games Expo, uh, Gen Con, uh, Essen, uh, GridCon. These are the ones I'm going to be going to this year. How did WinCon to? too? So, yeah, Powdered Week Con, of course. Yeah, so before Gen Con, I'm going to see Will. Then at Gen Con, I think, Mike, you're going to Gen Con. So, uh, Mike, if you're going yeah. to Gen Con, yeah, yeah, I'll meet up with you at Gen Con. So, yeah, it'd be absolutely, it's been a great year, and I'm looking forward to 2023. Yeah. Yeah, and I, yeah, I was, will echo Mike that this was a really good year of games, especially in the dungeon crawl adventure yeah. game market. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. You, I, a little too good, as in I have no friggin' time to play all these key giant yep. campaigns. But <laughs> like I finished, uh, uh, I didn't get it till late December last year. But role player adventures, so I counted yep. that on this year, which yeah. didn't even make my my top five. I thought that was a really good game. I like Stars of Akarios a lot. It's got a little yep. bit of weakness in a couple spots, but apparently they're working on that. That didn't make my list. Um, we didn't get uh, the Tales from Red Dragon Inn dungeon crawl that's that's coming up which i'm super excited about so suddenly dungeon crawlers came on strong and like for me both sworn one but any i think any of the other years i've done awards familiar tales would have won like that's yeah i mean like dungeon crawler adventure kind of campaign games i'm just looking at my top 20 of just games that came out this year uh galzir akarios familiar tales um Havlamachus, isis vanguard uh, Oathsworn, and then now Aeon Trespass Odyssey, and there's even more beyond those, so it's just, it's crazy. Which is cool, because I felt like for a couple of years, there's been a lot of fine ones that have been coming out, and then suddenly, like, they're all the really good ones are coming out, and there's always good Euro games coming out that are exciting, sure. um, constantly, but anyhow, there we have it. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, share to all the different channels. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Will, before you go, just uh, what was on your T-shirt? What did you not do? Well, no, I did. I won many times. The asterisk just says, not, not, not at the end. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Well, to, to, to edit this and just say Mike wins after that, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll just dub over everybody myself. <laughs> pip, pip, cheer, you, what, what? you know, that's all, that's all Mark says, the whole video. <laughs> You're right, Governor. Yes. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Hi. <laughs> Who, who's this? Uh, this? This random Stephen Skippy Brown person just messaged me. What the fuck is that? No, oh, really? That's funny. Where? How does he message you? Discord. All right. Everybody ready? Sure. I reckon. Because Mike doesn't want to get murdered, and Mark has to go <laughs> dinner. Dinner, and then I think I'm, what I'm going to do when I come back, I'll be slightly drunk, but I may well play Aeon's Trespass until two o'clock in the morning, drunk. Let's see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Those <laughs> battles, man. I'm about to record. You need to be upstairs yeah. right now. Jesus, I want to go upstairs now. I'm not scared. Yeah. All right. <laughs>